Tiger. I'm speaking to a hero. Courage is the most important trait in the human condition. He has it. Andy No, NGO. His book tomorrow comes out. It's up at DennisPrager.com and, of course, at Amazon. No, well, not of course, happily. Unmasked inside Antifa's radical plan to destroy democracy. During the break, Andy, I went to look up this, what had happened in Olympia this weekend. So I got this headline from a local website from a local station in Olympia, Washington. It's the capital of Washington, by the way, folks. 12 arrested in Olympia after occupying Red Lion Hotel near state capitol. The first sentence is, a homeless activist group forcibly occupied the Red Lion Hotel in Olympia Sunday, forcing employees and guests of the hotel to shelter in place, police said. So they're identifying them as a homeless activist group, not as Antifa. That's right. And this is what makes it so hard for people to understand the threat of the Antifa is that the media, even when it's um, the affiliation is obvious, they won't report it out. Um, and, but the most common thing is that they don't do any of the digging. Um, so I looked into this organization because it so-called organization because it just formed literally days ago. And the all the accounts on social media that were amplifying this uh, planned occupation of the uh, Red Lion Hotel were these Antifa accounts uh, within the same network. So when I looked at some of the people who I could identify as being part of calling for people to come and pe- those who are in the area. Um, and I saw that, well, you look at who they actually are. These are Antifa extremists um, just brand- rebranding themselves under a new name. And this is what I I want people to take away from the book, is that to not get too fixed on what these militant organizations call themselves. It doesn't matter if they call themselves anti-fascist or housing rights advocacy group. If they are preaching for anarchist communism in the name of anti-fascism, that is an anti-fa group. And so uh, you look at that, and just to repeat what I said before the break, These extremists allegedly brought in hatchets, knives, and um, batons and assaulted the Red Lion Hotel staff as they seized it. This is something you would hear happening in Somalia, not America, but it happened, and it's not headline news, and we're not learning the true picture about who these extremists actually are. Will Will the people who invaded this hotel, and I want people to understand two things. One, the terror that people would feel in a hotel with a violent mob attacking. Imagine you're a guest at a hotel, uh, which is sort of a sanctuary. And the, the other is that there has been no publicity given. We hear about January 6th every day, all day, and this I had never heard of, and I follow the news for a living. It is just one local... State TV station's website that has reported it. Uh, unless I'm wrong, has it been nationally covered? No, it hasn't. And you bring, bring up this issue, this perception about the threat of the far right is overblown because the legacy press only focus on one side of the extremists and not the other. So people don't know about what Antifa are doing. People don't believe me when I say, oh, so what happened on Capitol Hill? So those people did that day in and day out in my city last year. And worse, they actually came with explosives. They came with power tools to try to cut down the barrier around the federal courthouse so that they could burn it down when the officers were inside there. They didn't believe me. This is what happened. I document this all in the book. This is contemporary, far left domestic terrorism and it's not like this is unheard of in America. We've had now, going back to the 70s, many, many organizations and militant revolutionary leftists who have carried out targeted killings, robberies, explo- um, bombings, etc. It's just that the media has now been so saturated by leftists that they obfuscate this history from um, our collective minds. 
and history that is playing out as well, they don't report or they don't report fully. Your city of Portland had these incredibly violent riots for half a year. Has uh, I don't know the answer to this, so I'm not. It's not provocative. I simply want to know: Has anybody been arrested, tried, and convicted? Convicted. Uh, I know that there's been maybe literally a handful, like less than five out of a thousand cases who have taken some pleas, but their sentences have been things like probation in terms of somebody sentenced to jail time for the acts of violence, extremism. No. And that's this other issue that I document in the book. It's not, it's, not just that the extremists, uh, that there are many of them in Antifa, it's that in some of these political left-wing monocultures, like Portland, like Seattle, the public have elected in prosecutors who will actually not prosecute left-wing extremists. So as soon as Portland's new district attorney came in last summer at the height of the riot, he announced that it would be his office's policy to not prosecute felony riot charges because he, and he framed it as a matter of free speech. Antifa said that they're fighting for racial justice. So all these acts of extremism are being carried under the banner of things that sound noble, restorative justice, uh, social justice, so on and so forth. It's, I don't care what they call themselves. You look at their actions, they are burning down buildings. They're setting fires to buildings when people are inside. They're bringing weapons like knives and guns and a homemade and sundry devices. They've killed people. They killed somebody in Portland this summer. They hunted down a Trump supporter and shot him point blank before fleeing um, to Washington State. This is what they're doing. It's terrorism directly in front of us. They're not even hiding it. It's being, lots of it is even being recorded on video. And yet people actually think that this is a good movement of anti-fascist fighting against the far right. All right. I want to find out. Uh, we're going to speak again soon. I want to remind everybody that this uh, true uh, hero of our time, who's now fled this country, which make you cry, his book is up at DennisPrager.com, Unmasked.